heart failure is a common terminology that we encounter, but did you know that has different types and mm -hmm. classifications? In this video, we'll explore the differences between left and right-sided heart failure. What are these conditions, signs, symptoms, treatment, and our nursing interventions to use? But first, let's discuss the basics of our circulatory system to review the connection of our heart and lungs. Our circulatory system is in a closed loop or circuit, but it can be divided into two circuits. We have first the pulmonary circuit. This carries deoxygenated blood away from your heart and then delivers it to your lungs, where it picks up this oxygen and then returns the oxygenated blood to your heart. Then we have the systemic circuit. This carries oxygenated blood away from your heart, takes it to the rest of your body, and then oxygen is delivered to your tissues, joints, and bones. And then it returns this deoxygenated blood to your heart. Now, let's discuss what heart failure is. Heart failure is a chronic condition where the heart is unable to pump blood effectively to meet the body's needs. It's not a disease in itself, but rather a result of other conditions affecting its function. To understand our topic better, let's discuss ejection fraction, or the EF, of heart failure. EF is a comparison of the amount of blood in the chamber to the amount of blood pumped out. But let's do a little math. Normally, our heart is filled with 100 milliliters of blood and pumped out 50 to 70%. In the systolic dysfunction, less than 50% of the blood is pumped out. Systolic heart failure happens when the heart can't pump effectively during systole, or contraction, or the inability of the heart to pump with enough force. This may be caused by a numerical amount of things such as coronary artery disease, which is plaque buildup that narrows the arteries and then reduces our blood flow to our heart. Myocardial infarctions, or our heart attacks, Dilatic cardiomyopathy. The heart valve dilates and then our tissues on the outside become thin and weak and it doesn't pump effectively. Our infamous hypertension that makes anything cardiac related difficult. Moving along from our systole to our diastole heart failure, this occurs when the heart can't fill properly during this stretch or the diastole. A thicker heart muscle wall will result to a decreased size of the ventricle or inability of the heart to be relaxed or stretch will also kind of affect the amount of blood that fills the ventricle or our heart chamber. In diastolic dysfunction, normal ejection fracture is still possible, but the cardiac output is still not enough, and this leads to conditions known as cardiomyopathy, which is a thickened heart that doesn't fill properly because of how thick it is, causing the ventricles to be decreased in size and that inability to stretch. Heart failure can also be left-sided or right-sided, depending on which side is affected. In some cases, it could even affect both. Regardless of systolic or diastolic, left-sided heart failure means less blood pumped out of the heart going to the lungs. As a result, blood flow backs to the lungs and increases pulmonary pressure. Then fluid leaks into the lung tissue, which we all know is called pulmonary edema, or fluid in the lungs. An indication of left-sided heart failure is paying attention to my acronym that I've provided. Because left side heart failure primarily affects the blood flow between the heart and lungs, I'd like you to remember howling, heart racing, orthopnea, or difficulty breathing when laying flat, overall weakness due to the inadequate cardiac output, labored breathing, indicating fluid retention, such as weight gain, nocturnal paroxysmal dyspnea, or sudden nighttime breathlessness, and gurgling. You're gonna hear rails or crackles, which is again, indicating that pulmonary edema. Going back to the right-sided heart failure, which often results from left-sided heart failure, remember, increased pulmonary pressure makes it harder for the right ventricle to pump into the pulmonary artery, which is leading to systolic and eventually diastolic dysfunction. As for compensation, the right ventricle wall grows thicker to pump harder, leading to a smaller heart chamber for filling. Other causes include chronic lung diseases. Because less blood is pumped from the right ventricle, Blood backs up into the systemic circulation, causes fluid accumulation in different parts of the body. We then can assess by examining the distension level of the jugular vein, which is a very common cause of what we see in fluid overload and heart failure. We have another acronym, which is leg swing because one of the signs of right-sided heart failure is swelling of the legs and other parts of the body. So to remember leg swing, we have our large neck veins or jugular vein distension or JVD. We have our E for edema, especially pitting edema in lower extremities. We have abdominal girth because our abdomen being increasing because of that fluid everywhere. S for swelling for the legs, feet, and abdomen because of the liver also having ascites. We have weight gain, which is an early sign of fluid retention, so we want to monitor those daily weights. We could have an irregular heartbeat and a higher risk for AFib, nausea, 
from the liver congestion and general fatigue and weakness all around because our heart's not really working. So for heart failure management, we usually treat with a lot of blood pressure medications such as ACE inhibitors and beta blockers. ACE inhibitors are our prills like lisinopril and catapril, and beta blockers are our olols or our metoprolol and propanolol. These can reduce our blood pressure and heart rate and help out that systolic function. But if we're going to the right side of the heart failure and we have that swelling everywhere, we will need to get rid of it using diuretics, which is to reduce that water retention. Our first choice is furosemide, but if given too quickly, it can cause ototoxicity. And also remember, we have to watch our potassium. If we already have low potassium to begin with, we might use spironolactone for that spiraling down potassium because spironolactone is a potassium sparing diuretic. As for nursing interventions for CHF, or right-sided and left-sided heart failure, we might do monitor INOs, like our intakes and outputs. We might put them on fluid restrictions to make sure we're not overloading them with fluid. We might pay attention to their daily weights. And again, continuing hypertensive and diuretic therapy. Also form a heart-healthy diet, such as lowering your sodium intake, and getting regular heart checkups for a possible referral to a cardiology. Perhaps even TED stockings for that venous return, or keeping the legs elevated. Thanks for watching. If you found this video useful, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more medical information and to really help you on your next exam.